Welcome back to Master Glass. I am your host, Livio. Today is a fun episode. Uh, recently, I did a episode on the Negroni's Bayato. I will leave the link below to that. Uh, the Negroni's Bayato basically means the Negroni made wrong or mistaken. Well, today is about making corrections because this episode is about the Café Corretto. Corretto means, well, corrected. Uh, it is an old Italian tradition that I'm happy to share with you. Uh, it basically sort of kind of started in the 1930s. Uh, this was when coffee was not really easy to find. As you know, the 1930s, basically all over the world was a time, of, was hard times. Money was not uh, easy to find and neither were resources. But what the Italians did is they would basically take their coffee. Uh, and by the way, as I'm, while I'm at it, I'm gonna just show you something. When your coffee has that little foam on top, that means it's really, really good. So that crema is what shows a high quality coffee. But basically what they would do is at that time in the 1930s, the quality of the coffee wasn't really good. It was actually mixed in with other products such as Orzo and it just didn't taste right. And so the coffee needed to be corrected. Um, now, there really isn't much of a rule. I'm not here to tell you this is how you have to do it. Every single coffee shop, cafe in Italy will do it a little differently per the request of the consumer. Uh, but in Northern Italy, where it was a little more cold, they would correct it with some grappa. And I'm gonna just put some grappa right in here. What is grappa? It is an unaged brandy, uh, typically, uh, coming from the northern part of Italy. And because in northern Italy it is a little colder, they needed this in order to warm them up in, in addition to correcting their coffee. Now in southern Italy, uh, it was more common to either use an anise, an anisette, or a sambuca, and they basically corrected their coffee just like that, okay? This is what is called un caffè corretto. Now the sugar, do you put it do you not put it? It's to the liking of whoever is ordering it. In my case, because the grappa is dry, I do like a little sweetness to my sugar. I'm gonna go ahead and put the sugar in the grappa version. No sugar needed in the anisette version because even though it's a dry anisette, it is going to kind of sort of be a little sweeter. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a stir. Make sure I mesh that all in especially over here on this one to your right to make sure that that sugar melts. Just like that. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and try the, this one first with the anisette. And it's really, really, really good. Uh, a lot of people have an adverse uh, liking to black licorice or anise style flavors. Try it in this case here because it's very different. It's not dominant and it's not pungent. It's basically just kind of enhancing and adding a little bit of freshness to what instead is a big, bold, dark beverage like espresso. Going on to this one here. Mm, I can see the difference. I can see how in a colder weather, I would want my cafe corretto with grappa because it's a little bit more bold, it's a little bit more warm. Now I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna finish this for a reason. Back in the day, of course, Italians don't like to throw away anything. It is not a country that likes to be wasteful. Now I have some leftover sugar here. So in those cases, because that, if that happens, obviously it happens every time you're drinking it, there was another ritual to add something else to your order, which was called the amazza cafe. So you would basically say un cafe ed un amazza cafe, basically a coffee and a coffee killer. What was the coffee killer? Similar. The coffee killer was basically uh, anything you ordered next to it, just like that, served next to it. And its intention was to remove that dark, bitter coffee flavor from your mouth with something different. So you would drink your coffee and then you would drink your amazza cafe. Now, how does this story tie into the non-waste? 
I have leftover sugar and coffee in here and we do not like to throw things away. So it was very common to take your amatsa cafe, pour a little bit in, right? Take advantage of any of that leftover sugar, that little bit of coffee, nothing goes to waste, okay? So now it's nice and liquidy and drinkable. So first I'm gonna finish my cafe. Mm. And then I'm going to drink my Amatsa cafe. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Master Glass. And if you did, give it a like. If you haven't subscribed, and you don't know anything about my channel, check me out. I love to talk about beverages, especially those that have a ritual or a cultural tie. Come back to Master Glass with me, Livio Laro, where you get expert instruction for everyday consumption.